everyone, here we are again back in my workshop. I'm Colin Way, and um, this is part of the Skill Centre at Home uh, live series. So, we're here Thursday, and this is a two parter if you remember this week. Hopefully, you've made a start, and we're going to make one of these uh, German smokers. Um, and we'll do a, a seasonal German smoker, that's what we're trying to do anyway. So, we'll do farmer or, or even a wood turner, something like that. So, um, we had a good start. Um, we, we're we going to go over what we've done on Tuesday in a moment and I'm just, just going to crack straight into it today because um, there's a lot to get through and remember we're always fighting that, that time scale. So once again I've got Charlie back, he's back with us this time asking me all your questions, um, if there's any issues with, um, with camera angles um, then just say but we're going to try our best to get you in. Um, I'm not using loads and loads of expensive kits, so don't worry, you should be able to do this fairly easily with most of the kit you have. If you own a chuck, then um, obviously that makes things a, a little bit easier. So let's just recap just briefly before we, we get you nice and close into um, the action. And I've got a, a few little hints and, and tips and tricks here that we can, we can do to make this a bit easier for you. Um, so that's our project. This is um, a project that I've done for Wood Turning Magazine a few um, Christmases ago. Um, we're going to bypass the Christmas thing and we're going to keep it seasonal. So why don't you, I'm, I'm making a wood turner here because I wanted to show you how to make the lathe and things like that. Um, but why don't you use your imagination? I mean there's a little farmer, a cider, a cider um, apple picker, you know, it's uh, it's entirely up to you what you make. I did suggest maybe a nurse, a doctor, um, something like that, but something that's close to your heart, something that's a bit of bit of fun fit for you, you know. So let's have a look at where we are. Now if you haven't seen them already, I have the line drawings and the rough uh, measurements on the um, on this Facebook page. So on the questions, if you go to the, um, the, the questions section, you will find these pictures plus the line drawings with the dimensions on. Any dimensions aren't on there, use your imagination. It's not, uh, when it's not an overly precise piece um, of turning this. Make it the size you want. But there's some rough dimensions there for you. So I'm going to keep referring to that. Um, now, back on Tuesday, we made the figure to that point. So there's the base. We've done the base with a little recess on the bottom. Um, we've done the feet, um, the legs. And this is the um, incense holder. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things here. So we've got four holes in that incense holder. So two are to join together and everything's joined together with six mil dowel. So I'll show you my dowel and I just buy it. It's beach dowel. Um, uh, we do it as a company accidents to tools sell beach dowel in packs of 10. Uh, I think it's about 500 mil long um, packs of 10. But then just cut it to length using a little um, V block. Okay, I cut V-blocks for quite a lot of things, so a little, as a Sapili V-block, um, and I just cut through, and then use a little Japanese saw just to cut lots of little dowels off the length. So that's our joining method. Um, so everything's um, pre-drilled. So the legs you saw on Tuesday, how that would have been pre-drilled. If not, then go and watch it on YouTube. Um, and then we've got our four holes. Um, obviously the two holes here that join the legs together need to be the same distance apart as the ones on the base otherwise you're going to have a drunken uh, smoker um, so keep them the same and then these two holes these are vent holes so we're going to have a little incense cone in here burning and that is going to create smoke but to, to let it come out it's just like a chimney we need to create some vents so these two are for air to come in now the air to come out will come out through the body we're going to drill a hole in the body and then further hole in the head and it comes out the, the mouth so that's the idea. Um, the body, the bit we made um, again on Tuesday, that's just a dome, and we've sized the little recess on the inside there to fit over our incense holder. Okay, so that's gonna fit there. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take that and convert the body with now three flats, so we've got two flats for the arm and one flat for the head. This flat here um, is drilled, and to drill that, to keep your fingers safe and out of harm's way, back to the V-block, uh, I'm using my pillar drill. If you're gonna use um, a cordless drill to do this, just a little bit of care, you don't want things slipping and fingers getting drilled um, by mistake. The V-block sits there, that goes under the pillar drill, and then I can drill that hole at a nice uh, 90 degree angle. That hole is bigger, 
than the one that is eventually going to go through the head. I want a nice small compact hole going through the head. So we've got loads of air rushing up and a little bit of air coming out the, the actual mouth hole which will let the smoke through. So that's our next job. That's going to be the first thing we do. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look at um, how that incense holder is positioned. So all I'm using here, so Charlie, just pan around just here very quickly and then back to me. So this is my little jar of bottle caps, just a load of bottle caps there. Um, if you have seen the inside of a bottle cap, they come back, Charlie. They've got a little bit of silicon on the inside. It's like a seal and they're painted most of the time on the outside. So all I do is take these outside, put them on a stick, uh, put them on a brick, um, turn them upside down and then using one of my uh, one of the little blow torches Use one of the little blow torches and burn off all the paint and then the silicon um, Sort of drips off on the underside give it a good scrub and a wash and then that's your little holder Okay, let's just take our thing apart. That's our little holder then for our incense cone now You'll see that I've drilled all the way through Okay, because we don't want the incense cone falling over on the inside. So that now is going to get screwed with a little brass screw down. Now I'd suggest the countersunk screw. And then our incense cones, if you don't know what incense cones look like, they are literally that. So like incense sticks, but these are rolled up into um, a cone shape. Um, amazing smell, this is cinnamon. Little incense cone, that fits on the top. Okay, and nice and safe, you've got that separation from the, um, from the timber um, and the burning cone. Okay, so you need a, a barrier, it's an important part of what we do. Um, same with tea lights and things like that, you need metal or glass barriers between. So that's the inside, that's, that's what we would do to make that um, um, safe. So a little bottle cap, burn off all the, the horrible bits, the paint and the glue, somewhere nice and ventilated. And they're free as well, that's the other thing. So that's where we are. So, Charlie, I reckon it's time to come in nice and close. Okay, so we're gonna look down here. I'm gonna do some sanding for you. I'm gonna have the dust extractor going here because this is a lot of dust that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna create three flats on here. I have no idea what the angles are, everybody. Um, you're gonna experiment with those. I want to make sure, and I'm gonna show you the picture here, um, you you do find that most smokers have a slightly leant forward head Okay, so almost like hunchback. That's just because of the shape of the, the body um, And then we've got the, uh, the the arms here that are going to be on the on the flats now Wherever obviously we don't want the the, the smoker with his arms sticking right the way out. So doing a fairly flat um, Angle so this is wearing a smock So you if you're in a wood turning club, of course you can create the smock to the color of your wood turning club colors um, if not let your imagination go crazy. Dust extraction going on now, everybody. Okay, so we'll do the arm flats first. I'm just using my table here as a support. Three 
So let's back engineer the the um, the sander that I'm using here. So I'm using a little platform. We now sell these as a round version to go on the Evolution um, tool rest stems. So um, they're still available. Always make yourself a sacrificial wooden plate because you can replace that. You can't replace the metal bit. Okay, so a little bit of timber up there. That's a bit of engineered, so it's ply, engineered timber. Um, and then our sanding discs, these are really useful. You've seen me use loads of these. Um, and again, it's a bit of plywood. Plywood stays flat. That's basically the reason I'm using that. With a faceplate ring on the back, then I can extend or expand my C jaws onto it. So it makes a nice little tool for the lathe. And, and always using Velcro. I'm sure you've seen the non-Velcro type used before, but you know what that's like. Every time you want to replace the disc, it's a sticky mess on the back. You've got to use a, a, a hot air gun to get it off. And I find that Velcro is much, much easier. Okay, so that's our sanding disc. A lot of these German toys that I tend to make use a lot of, well, there's a lot of sanding involved um, on this, all the square sections. So, right, there we are. Now, let me, um, we would now make the hole to run through there. And like I said, I'm not going to take you away to the pillar drills to do that. We're going to stay to the lathe today. Um, but that would be done a 10 mil hole through there in my uh, V-block just to keep my hands safe. Okay, just in there. We don't drill the sides. So that's where we are so far. Okay, Charlie, back to me just for a minute. Okay, so I'm now gonna work on at the body. We're gonna start looking at the arms now, the shoulder pads, these bits here, um, or sorry, the, the upper arm. The actual bottom of the arm is gonna be done with a separate bit of timber, only because of painting uh, later on. And we're gonna talk briefly about painting and I'll show you a little bit. I'm not gonna do a huge amount. Uh, the, the painting, the decorating, I find is, um, it's the bit that takes the longest. So, you know, you could spend a whole day painting the figure if you wanted to. Um, but I'll show you a couple of little sections on that. Let's get the turning, the interesting bits done first. So, um, arms next. So I've done some prep again. I've got three, three um, little smokers on the way here. So we're now going to the arms. So we have to make um, a piece like this. Okay, already pre-drilled. So I want a nice, um, six mil hole in the bottom and then again a flat on the side so let's do one of those i prepped the timber up block of lime in this case already drilled i've done that on the pillar drill again so and i've centered up that side so we're going to go back to what we were doing a bit of between center work back to what we were doing on tuesday and we're going to use the light pool drive okay it's the logical one to use as i've said before if you don't have a light pool drive something with a single point so even an engineer center they work brilliantly for that sort of thing because we want to drive we want to drive around the hole that you've already drilled so we're going to put that one there i've centered up this side so that can go in there i'm going to make it the same size as the one i've already turned and let's go for a short tool rest to do that. Speed on this is going to be fairly rapid. Um, so I reckon about 2,000 revs here. Starting again at zero. Slowly creeping the speed up. There's my 2,000 revs. And I'll go to a 6 mil bowl gouge. And remember, we're turning with friction here. If the, the piece does stop, don't worry. Just tweak the tail stop and away you go again. So we'll do this whole process with the with the bowl gouge. There's my roughing cut. Now I'm going to drop the handle, turn the flute in, and do a skew cut. There we are. We'll check diameter. A lot of the time, if you cut these pieces all the same size, if you rough down to a cylinder, then you're you're not going to have too much adjustment done. Remember, it's not. Um, it's not an overly critical thing. It's not, we're not making these over accurate. These are nice little crafty pieces. Um, skew chisel now, I'm just gonna clean the underside. This is where the hole is. So I'm gonna have that nice and clean. There we go. And then bowl gouge, just for the bit in the main part. We're gonna 
just shape up to the shoulder. Don't worry, we are going to come back to the skew in a minute. Around about there. Remember the shape we're going for is this one. So let's go, what skew shall I use? Let's go for a slightly smaller skew. Sorry, a slightly larger skew. Now there is a way we can tidy up this little tag end in a minute, which is quite a nice way of doing things. There we are, so that's the top. Now we have got a little nib on there, don't worry about that. Um, we can go down as far as we're there, if it comes off it doesn't matter. Of course you want to be sanding as you go in, I'm not doing too much sanding for you here. Um, well, I'll, I'll go on, well, let's do a little bit actually. How much time have I got, Charlie? How much have you used? It's so? been 17 minutes. Oh, okay. A little bit of extraction, everybody. I'm starting with a 150 grit. Telling you about my extractor bay or that extension to the workshop, Charlie. Just pan around. We've got a watertight mini extension now, so you can see my original dust extractor here, the um, AC60, and we've got my new extractor here waiting to be plumbed in. Um, I need to get another 16 amp supply for this one, uh, and then that's going to be plumbed in and blanked off there because I don't want the noise coming into me. And I managed to creep a little bit of a wood store in there as well, so it saved me a huge amount of room in the workshop. That's why you've probably seen a little bit of a, a cleaner workshop than usual because I've had a, the opportunity to tidy things up whilst we've been whilst we've been making it. Okay, so let's. There's the arms. Let's just quickly show you that little little tip about cleaning this little nib end away. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my old faithful chuck. Okay, the old knuckle duster, this is my apprentice chuck. And we're gonna use a little bit of that beach dowel. We've got a pre-drilled hole in our little shoulder pad. Now, admittingly, this isn't going to take much pressure. However, we put that on there. Gives me a chance to use my flush cut saw. Don't worry about the wall. We're not turning. All I'm going to do is sand that back. Not through the grades. Give this a little bit loose. Put a little bit of tissue up there. Just so you fill that void. But there, we've managed to solve that little dome quite nicely. Right, just by holding it on its dowel that it's eventually going to sit on. Um, once we've done that, back to the sander, you're going to sand your flat um, on it the same way um, we have with the body. And then the flat, of course, will then marry up with our flat that we've turned already sanded on the body. So we're all almost there, look, in terms of arms anyway. So now we need to do the, the lower part of the arm. So to do that, I'm going to use a different timber. I'm going to go for a piece of beech. And again, beech dowel is the, the preferred choice for me. So I'm going to start off, or pre-cut these. Um, I've got a couple of lengths. Let's go for the shorter length, actually. 
All right, so we're going to go for that piece there. Uh, and I'm going to drill, first of all, the hole, so the 6 mil hole. Nice and central. A little drill chuck. So six mil hole. Don't need to go too far. Okay, I'm only gonna do one of these for you, just so we can do a little bit more. You, you've seen it once, you don't need to see it, see it twice. We're going to use that very shortly so let's do the same process that we've just done we're going to turn between centers and then we're going to hold the piece on the bit of dowel again to clean it up okay nice small bit of turning. It's not going to be the smallest bit of turning that we're going to do today. We're going to turn, we're going to turn the turning tool. A bit of a chicken and egg situation there. We're going to turn the turning tool. We're going to turn a little skew. Um, but first of all, let's do our, our hands. Wobbling around a little bit. That doesn't matter at all. Um, and let's use, so I'll start with that same roughing, uh, bowl gouge rather, six mil, quarter inch. Just clean everything up a little bit. Um, can you tell them where they can purchase the flat attached tool rest that you use to make the feet on Tuesday? Ah, yeah, uh, so that, that's an old tool rest that Axe uh, Tools used to sell. We now don't um, sell the, the square one, we sell a round version, but Go for the round version and instead, so it's square here. The, the, the shape here doesn't matter. It's what you do up here, which is the big um, issue. So we'll go for the round one with the tool post. It's on Axminster's website. It's the Evolution, part of the Evolution tool rest system. Um, go for that one. Then you make yourself a wooden, like I've done here, a wooden plate that sits on the top. You can either screw it or glue it onto the top. Um, and then there's your square section. So the shape here, doesn't matter. It's this that you make, which is the important bit. So that's what it is. It's part of the Evolution Torus system um, and it's the round, um, it's the little round plate. So there we are. I'm gonna make a little hand here. Everything is very abstract, of course. Now that bit there, let's do, so let's allow That's all we need to make. We don't need to be any, we don't need to be any more um, ham like than that. We could do the same thing that we've just done with the shoulder. Um, if you catch catch the, the gouge on the tailstock center while doing this, is that disastrous? No, no. Um, the tailstock center is gonna be softer than the chisel. 
I'm not saying it won't blunt the chisel. It's, you can go and sharpen the chisel again. Um, no, I've never... I've hit the, the, the tailstock centre plenty of times. I've hit the, the headstock centre plenty of times. I've never broken either tool or centre. You may have taken a little nick out of one of it, but then if it's your tool you resharpen. Oh. If it's the tool you resharpen, um, and I wouldn't worry about it if it's the centre, it's not going to damage it or break it rather. Right, so we'll do one more little clean up on that one. So the same thing we've done with the shoulder, you know what we're doing now. A little bit of dowel in there. Incidentally, if you're thinking, oh, they're, they're I don't want to use them, they look really, really dangerous. Well, to be honest with you, yes, they've caught my knuckles numerous times. It's almost now like an electric fence, and I've told you this before, that my body, um, without realising, um, sort of gets out of the way. But, there is a solution. The solution are these jaws. Okay, now these are designed, these are um, designed on the old pin chuck idea. Um, but they go down to almost nothing in the center and they will hold all of these small pieces. Okay, so have a look at those on the website. They're, uh, they're a handy little draw nose. So that one's gonna go in there. That's gonna be my holder. And again, we're just gonna sand that little nib away. Could have taken a full saw to that just to clear it off a little bit, but it's it's disappearing. There we go. Obviously, down through the grades, you make it nice and clean. Um, spend time at it. I'm not spending time at this. I'm just showing you how it works. Okay. All right. So there's our hand. So let's just pop those two together a minute. Um, I need to cut another bit of dowel, so that's a good, good time to show you. I'm just using the little flush cut shikonin saw, or shikonin saw, this one. Um, I'm finding this is a real joy to use actually, so I've literally just done a single cut all the way through, and then that lies in there nicely. And because it's a blind um, cut, on the um, blind cut on the V-block, I can't fall through and hit the bed of the lathe or anything like that. It doesn't fly anywhere. I can push them through, I can make another cut. It's just a nice, easy little little way of working. Um, if you try and use a bandsaw to do something like this, you're gonna have an accident. You're gonna have an accident. Things are gonna go flying. What happens, um, and most of the, the my advice comes from me making stupid mistakes. Um, these fly all over the place. Um, and your fingers are too close, they're too close to the bandsaw. So something like that, much safer. Um, is there a link to the plans? So go on the Facebook, um, certainly on Tuesday's Facebook um, section, you'll find them on the comments. The first couple of comments are the plans and the draw and the pictures. There we are. There's my, there's the little hand. And turn that little hand. It's going to go there. Okay. It's been half an hour. Been half an hour. Good. Okay. So anybody, any of my colleagues that are helping me out. So it's not just me doing these videos. I've got people behind the scenes um, making sure everything works. So my colleagues behind the scenes, I'm sure they're going to let you know in a minute where the plans are today. Um, but if not, then if you go to Tuesday's um, bid, look at the comments like I say the plans are there okay so where are we so we need to do a head next now this is a nice little piece of turning um, the reason being there's a couple of little things I want to a couple of little gems of work holding and how to turn balls and things like that because that's all the head is it's a ball so let's just find my center are we on this Charlie time no are we on what I'm doing here So I'm going around all four faces just to give myself a nice centre centre spot. And then of course we can use our braddle. Should be using one of the braddles that I've made, shouldn't I? In my other smock. I'll tell you what, I use the one. There we go. 
just to prove. This is the one that we made together a couple of weeks ago. There we are, and that one's gonna be held between two centers to start with. So we use, let's use a friction drive to hold that initially. So a little friction drive. So ring centers. There we are, that one there. And in the tail sock end, for the moment, we're gonna use the same profile ring center. Just for the moment, we're gonna swap things around a little bit. I've got a couple of homemade pieces that I wanna make, that I wanna show you. Okay, so there we go. Um, where did you get your lathe light? The lathe light I got from Maker Central last year, and it, the make of it um, is Glow Force. Pop that in there. And this is the, what's that say, Charlie? M A G M8. But if you go to Glow Force, um, then you'll see it. And where did you get the hoop and hook? Um, um, Axe Mr. Tools. We sell that either as in metre strips um, by 100 mil wide, or we sell it in various discs. Um, and I've always said, um, make sure that you go for the disc that supported by sanding discs. Don't make your, 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 your hook um, a disc and then not being able to find any sanding discs to go on it. So make sure you, you do your research for us. Um, that one's an eight inch. Um, I think you can get 10 inch. And of course, there's all sorts of power sanders um, that are supported by sanding discs. And some of my smaller ones, one of the nylon ones I've made, that's that's literally is a power sanding disc pad. Um, nice and easy to come by. So this is the head. And there's nothing difficult about making the head apart from it's a little sphere and that's all it is. So we're going to measure the diameter of that. It's a good point to show you. Can, is that in glare, Charlie, or is that okay? I want to show the head. That's fine. That's fine. So you can see it's a ball, that's all. Um, so that's what we're gonna do, we create the ball. So I want my vernier. Okay, so. A ball is the same diameter all the way around, of course. So that's going to be... So that there is uh, a 45 diameter, so 22.5. There's the sensor of the ball. And now all you need to do is turn a rough ball shape. Little bit more. 
Now what I want you to do then, we're going to swap the sensors over and we're just going to turn that at 90 degrees to itself. I want to now do that basically and then we can knock off these corners. This is going to give us the image of a true circle which makes life a lot easier. Um, I'm going to add a chuck and we're going to do some wooden drives to this. I've got a little nylon um, tailstock centre which I've used for a long time and I know I'm going to get lots of questions. We don't make them anymore unfortunately, however I'm using it a lot. But I've got a solution for you. Okay, so that's my tailstock drive. The solution, and I've made many of these. This is one for making skittle balls. I make surrounds to my um, to my tailstock centers that creates that cut for me. There's another smaller one there for holding metal discs for spinning, but that's for my skittle balls. Um, and so that's all you need to do. Just make a little sleeve for your tailstock center that fits over to do the same thing I'm doing there with that bit of nylon. Um, in the headstock, we're going to use um, another piece of timber. I have, again, a piece of beech dowel. And all I want to do with this piece of beech dowel is just create a little... Um, it is a question that might test you, mm. but um, if you have the Evo SK114 chuck, yeah. Which accessory jaws slash carriers are suitable for the pin jaws and will they allow dowels to go all the way through the spindle? Um, that's right, okay. So if you're using the extended um, length accessory mounted jaws on the 100 mil, then you'll have a problem. So go for the smaller set of accessory mounted jaws and you'll be able to do that, use that on both 100 and the 114. I was getting worried for a minute. I wonder what the question was going to be. Not too bad. So we're going to, that's too long at the moment. So let's just part a bit of that away. There we are. I'm sure we'll use that little lump somewhere else. Um, sure everything up, taper it down. Let's do a very little recess. There. So now we can hold everything between centers, give some length to that tail stop. Look, this is a real um, long way around doing this, only because I think, you know, turning balls is always a question that's asked about. Um, um, there's all, there's lots of sphere jigs, which are great if you're doing repetition, but if you just want to do one every now and again, this is a great way. Um, and it's certainly the way I've always done skittle balls and things like that. But what you, have, what you get now, and I'm hoping the camera's picking that up, you get a ghosting of a true sphere. That's working well, brilliant, Charlie. You get a ghosting of a true sphere. So all we have to do now is take off the waste wood. It's been 40 minutes. 40. You can swivel them around a couple of other times just to make sure. Now I'm just going to sand that because that's actually worked quite well. Um, not that I'm surprised, of course, but we're going to sand that a little bit. Done 40 minutes, so there's lots of other things I want to show you yet.
very easy way of doing it. It's the way we've always done it. And oh, just a little bit of timber. Like I say, make a sleeve for your tailstock centre. Jobs are good. Right, I think now you can see what's going to happen here. So now we're going to sand and that's going to be placed um, again on there. Now once you've drilled the main hole through your figure, remember in the, um, the V-block, you're going to glue that on. You don't drill this until you've actually glued it on there. And then you can aim the hole through. Six mil hole running through there. I would suggest on the V-block again, the hole mechanism in there. And you're going to come through um, to meet the flat. It doesn't have to be tidy. That's the main, you know, as long as it goes through, the smoke needs to come out. You can see on the picture here, guide me Charles, is that all right? Um, the hole's going to be coming through this way. Okay, no given angle or anything like that. Um, the incense cone's actually down here somewhere. We've got the vent coming up. The incense cone's down here somewhere. The vent's underneath, so the air's coming in, allowing the smoke to come up and out through that mouth hole. All right, so that's the mechanics of the whole, the whole thing. So hopefully there, you don't need to see me sand this now. It's the same process, sand a flat, hold it on there, and away we go. Now the nose of our figure is exactly the same. Um, the nose is a little round ball, but you're not going to go to the time or the trouble to put that between centers and return it. It's just a little um, held in the chuck um, and then a little nose turned quite simply. Now, a couple of things I want to show you here. First of all, we're going to do the hat, then we're going to look at the lathe um, and then the tool. Sorry, Charlie, is that better? So the hat, the lathe and the tool is the most important things next. Keep asking questions, everybody. 17 minutes left. That's good. Okay, so just briefly, let's look at the hat. So the hat as a piece of turning. This is going to be a baseball hat. You can see, I've just done a little line, a little pencil drawing there where um, the timber that's going to be left is. So that's going to be the cap or the peak of the hat. And then the rest of this is sanded away on my sanding disc. Okay, it's no different. So we've got a nice round piece of of turning um, and uh, a little, I'm going to turn one for you but it literally is is just the peak left okay so let's do that next I'm going to rock it through this a little bit Charlie's saying thank goodness see jaws back on for this one I get lots of people ask um, about how many sets of jaws should you have and it's very personal that because it all depends on the type of projects that you make um, regularly and now you see me through this you know all of these weeks that we've been doing this that I'm actually using very few jaws the sea jaws come up an awful lot my old time chuck that I've just had again I use that an awful lot it's the, the, the jobs that you do dictate the jaws you have. I mean, as a company, we probably make about 30 plus sets of jaws. I don't think anybody is ever going to use that many jaws, to be fair, but it, there should be a jaw for everyone. Um, do you know where and if you can get a copy of your article? Um, back issues of Wood Turning Magazine would be would be the best place I would have thought if you go on to Woodworkers Institute GMC and look at back issues I'm guessing don't quote me on that but I'm guessing any problems further than that though give me a shout right I want to make this this is going to be the underside so I'm going to make that fit the head down there a little bit just a little wee you didn't see that that was me rushing and just not pausing at the beginning of my cut oh come on come on
So if you get that, I, I have gone over this already. If you get that regularly, turn the flute in. I'm gonna do that one more time for you because I made a big mess there. So if you're getting that ripping out all the time, you can see my flute is facing roughly two o'clock. Turn the flute over. That then creates a little line. Once you've got that line, now you've got a hard shoulder. Now turn the flute back and start pushing. There we are, finishing. Now, let's test the head and make sure the head fits in there. What do I do with the head, Charlie? See where I put the head? Or headless. Oh, there, I've got it, got it. That's got it there. Well, that fits nicely. Happy with that. Okay, so now we'll do the peak. What's the time like, Charles? 12, 12 minutes. 12 minutes to go. So I'm just using the parting saw here, just cutting the, the rim of the hat. Stop and check, make sure I'm not getting too close. You can always measure the force. So with a spindle gouge. Then again, sand before you part off. Sand before you part off. Now, to tidy up this face, back in the C jaws, or back in your set of jaws, chosen jaws, to tidy that up. I've done no tidying up here. I've got some rough edges and things like that, only because of speed. And then we're gonna go back to what we, we said earlier. You're gonna sand this edge away going right up to the edge of your hat there, but leaving your peak. That's for your baseball cap. Okay, most turners have a baseball cap of some sort. And then of course, that'll fit over the head. So that'll fit over the head nicely. Nice and simple. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now I'm not gonna make the lay for you, but what I've done is just made, made one before. And uh, can everybody see that, Charlie? So what I've done here is just a flat bit of timber and I've just shaped with my little sanding disc these two edges from some scrap timber. And then I've used a nail, which I've just chopped, put a couple of drill holes in there, okay, and used the nail. We're gonna make a little bit of turning now for that. And I wanna make the turning tool very quickly. So I'm gonna be quite rapid. We're gonna go back to old faithful Chuck. Again, if you're missing anything, guys, go back and watch it later on. It's going to be on um, Instagram, YouTube, you can watch it on Facebook again. Um, we're going to use my light pull drive and a single pointed tail stop centre.
back. This is some miniature turning. I did want to show you, I've got a new set of Crown uh, miniature turning tools. I really wanted to show you those on these small pieces, but I'm going to run out of time. So I think that's going to be um, a little demonstration for a, a future uh, video that we're doing. So let's quickly, I'll, I'm going to zip through these two little projects because time is precious. I want to make a turning tool. Um, in fact, I know what I'm going to do. Let's make a little lamp for the lathe. Same one that we had in the picture. So, little spindle gouge. And then we're going to make a turning tool. Just a little bit of turning. There we are, sand, polish, or whichever you want to do with that one. Because I pre-drilled this, what we can do now when it comes off the lathe, what we can do now is mount it on our lathe, and that's going to be on a little bit of leather around our wood turner's neck. Okay, now do whatever pro uh, project you want to do on the lathe. Of course, you can do a little bowl if you want to. Let's pop that to one side whilst we turn Turn the skew chisel. How much time, Charlie? Six minutes. Oh, six minutes. To an hour. Six minutes to an hour. Right, whilst I'm working, a little bit of news. So I'm going to tell you, I'm taking um, a very brief break um, next week. So we're just having next week off. Don't worry, we're coming back. It's just next week. We're going to show some reruns of some of the older vids, and there's going to be lots going on on our. Um, social media so don't worry we uh, we're not going to be absent I'm certainly coming back the following week and I want to give you a, a really nice little project the following week I'm going to do a QA and a again because I feel there's going to be lots of questions and I want to look at some airbrushing for these characters which I'm going to do whilst I'm away I'm going to finish them up and then we're going to look at some airbrushing and some painting tips for you as well. So get making whilst I'm away. But the project that I'd like to make, the two part project I'd like to make is a raised fruit bowl. So we're gonna have a base, a pedestal, and the actual bowl itself. So a slightly larger project on that one. So this is gonna be a little skew chisel for our man to hold. Can you make a nutcracker at some point? You're dragging Christmas in now, aren't you? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how everyone will feel about that, but um, just watch this space. That's all I'm going to say. So, it's a little skew chisel. How much time, Charlie? Five minutes. So this is the feral. Three minutes.
Right, that's not the shape I want, but we're running out of time. So very, 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 very quickly, this is gonna be a crown cryo chisel. So black handles represent the cryo. Okay, we're gonna have ferrule. How much time have I got, Charlie? Three minutes still. Three minutes? Yeah. All right. I'm nearly Two there. minutes. Two minutes. Shall I bring it back? Bring it up. I've never done a video and had lots of time at the end. Never done it yet. So a skew chisel, so this needs to be flat. There we are, a little bit of refining to that, but you get the idea, okay? Guys, a little bit rapid, like I say, a brief, um, a brief, brief departure next week, but we'll be back the following week with that two-piece um, project um, out a Q&A session as well. So get making these smokers, post some pictures. We've had some fantastic pictures so far this week. In fact, we've had a couple today. But until a week Tuesday, have a great time turning. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.